sliced beef rib right there. Then we got our fish sauce, our sticky rice, and our garnish on the side that we're gonna eat with it. Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back for another video. Today we are going back to beef ribs, but today I'm gonna add a little bit of a twist to it. So on today's cook, we're gonna try to bring some influence and some Thai food into this dish. The other thing I wanted to show on this video is doing a cook on that SNS 22 inch kettle style grill that I just recently got. Right now it's actually starting to snow, so this is the first snowy cold cook of the season. What I want to show is that you guys can still get really, really good barbecue out of something like a kettle grill. So for those of you guys who only have a kettle style grill and have been wanting to cook beef ribs, this video is for you. Without saying too much, let's get cooking. All right, folks, so this is how we're dealing with our beef ribs today. Last time when I bought beef ribs, they came two to a pack and I didn't want to cook both of them. And I tried to vacuum seal just one big one, but I couldn't, so I had to split them all up, which I think in the end is gonna work out better for us for today. So you guys can see that marble and that beef rib right there. You can kind of tell from that beef rib that we cooked last time that certain things that you really wanna cook down are these kind of pockets of fat, like at the ends right here. So it's really, really important when you cook beef ribs that you cook at a high enough temp so that you can render out chunks of fat like that. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, you wanna see a full length video about me just cooking beef ribs on an offset and a three bone beef rib, go check out this video that I leave in the top corner for you. Just to kind of show you guys that it doesn't really matter what you use as a slather, as long as it's nice and um, you know tacky in the end, I'm gonna add some Worcestershire sauce to it. We don't need a lot, it's just to get the surface to be tacky. We don't want to put so much in there or drown our beef ribs so they taste like Worcestershire sauce, like that is not the purpose of it. We are also not going to remove the membrane off of our beef rib. The membrane is nice because it's going to kind of keep this on the bone because if, if we end up do cooking a little bit too hot, uh, we want something to kind of hold the you know big chunk of meat to the bone. And now we're going to season this up. Just like last time, we have our seasoning, which is two parts pepper to one part salt. And just because I liked it, I'm going to add a little bit more garlic to this as well. So the importance of all this pepper is really to create a nice bark on the outside of the beef rib. Here we got our two beef ribs that are nice and seasoned on all ends. Now we're gonna throw this on the smoker. All right, we had our coals going for a little bit while we were prepping up our beef ribs. It's hot over here, and we got some that aren't lit over on this side. So as it continues to move over there, we'll hopefully get a nice consistent heat all the way through. I also found these chunks of wood that I'm pretty sure I've had for a very, very long time because I haven't you know, cooked on a Weber Smoky Mountain or a kettle grill in a very long time. And I luckily came across these uh, pecan and hickory chunks. And I think there's some apple in there too. Uh, so it'll be nice to kind of play around with this again. So I'm gonna throw one of these chunks in there just to kind of get some smoke going. And then we'll throw in one every now and then just to add a little extra smoke flavor. But yeah, I'm pretty excited for this one. I haven't done this in a long time. So right now I'm gonna put my biggest beef rib towards the heat source uh, and just kind of away from it, just kind of hugging this wall right here. Uh, just cause I don't wanna have the smaller one be uh, closer to that fire. We're just kind of creating this V shape right here. That way the only thing that I really have to worry about if it does get too hot is this corner up front here and this corner right here. If, if it does get too hot, then all I gotta do is turn them there's so much space here that you can kind of do whatever you want. If you wanted to do a three bone beef rib, you can fit this whole thing in here also. All right, last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this water reservoir with some uh, warm water. So filling up this water is really just to kind of buffer some of the heat and kind of be like a heat collector in between like the heat source and where our meat's gonna be. All right, so we're all set up. We got our coals going, we got a beef or zone, we got our water pan filled, we got our chunk of flavored wood in there and uh, we're just gonna close this up. So I am gonna close down some of these vents just because it is kind of windy outside today and I don't want like a gust of wind to come and either blow a bunch of ash all over the place or to give our fuel source kind of too much oxygen where it does start to get a little bit hotter than I want it to. In terms of cooking time, it should be shorter because we have individual ribs, 
but just because they're smaller doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna take a third of the time. When we did the full rack of beef ribs, it took us about seven, seven and a half hours or so. I wouldn't say these are gonna just take two hours because it still needs a certain amount of time with some extra heat in order to render out that fat that we're talking about earlier. And the huge benefit to using this grill as well is the fact that I don't gotta check on this thing every 20 to 30 minutes. Usually when I do cook videos, especially on the offset where I'm having to watch a fire for a couple hours, I almost can't do anything and I can't leave the house. But for today, I'm gonna actually go to the gym right now. guys so it's been about two hours and 20 minutes and uh, let's take a look at what we got here temp is still holding steady at that 275 mark our beef ribs looking pretty dang good right there yeah not bad for two hours we got some good color on there right now all right now that we're back our next step that we're going to be doing is making some sticky rice so this is glutinous rice. So this is a little bit different than, you know, other rice that you have. Medium grain rice, and it looks extra starchy. So the first step we're gonna do, and I don't know if this is what you do with every rice, this is just how I've learned how to make rice, is that we're gonna wash this rice so, it, so the water runs nice and clear. I'm gonna add some water in here to show you guys what it looks like. So I just add some water to it and you can kind of see that it's a little bit cloudy already and I haven't even started to kind of mix this around. As you start to move this rice around in this water and you're again trying to rinse off all that extra starch, you can see how cloudy it's getting. So we're gonna dump out this water and we're gonna rinse it a bunch of times until this water runs nice and clear because if we don't, the rice is gonna be extra, extra starchy and it's gonna not have a great texture. All right, so we got this rice that we rinsed. I think I did it like four or five times, but you guys can see that water is now clear. So the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna soak this for about three to five hours or so uh, before we steam this. The next thing that we're gonna be working on is our fish sauce. So these are the ingredients that we're gonna be working with. Fish sauce, sugar, some lime, garlic, and some Thai chilies. Similar to a barbecue sauce, we got our salt, we got our sweet, we got our aromatics, we got our spice, and we got our acid. In terms of what a good barbecue sauce should be, I think we're covering all those grounds here. So the first thing that we're gonna deal with is our Thai chilies, and I'm gonna glove up so I don't hurt myself later. I have three Thai chilies here, but I'm gonna reserve this last one just to see how spicy these first two are. And if I want it more spicy, I can cut this up and add into the sauce later. Next is our garlic. We want pieces of something like this. We're gonna cut some rings of some lime in here and we're gonna have it kind of steep, but I also wanna add some juice in there as well. But we're gonna have one ring of lime that we can kind of steep. Let's put everything together. And for presentation purposes, if you're gonna add two Thai chilies in there, if you can find a red one as well, I would do one red and one green. This just makes it look a lot better. Later on, I'm gonna give it a taste to see if it needs a little bit more spice, maybe a little bit more sugar. If it's too salty, I can add a little bit of water in there. And then if I need a little bit of brightness, I can add a little more of that lime juice. But that's it. All right, so here are what our beef ribs are looking like. And I think they're almost done. They're feeling pretty soft. Oh yeah, that one feels really nice. They did fall off the bone a little bit. I think it got a little bit too hot. And so the membrane kind of like popped around the bones. But the way that we're gonna serve them today, I'm kind of happy that we got a nice char on these membranes too, because I don't know if you guys do. In my family, we get these nice and crispy and cut them into little chunks and, and eat them because they're delicious. I think the bigger one, this one might need a little bit more time, but this smaller one right here, feels really, really nice. So we're gonna take this one off. We'll leave this one on for maybe another 30, 45 minutes or so. Now that the beef ribs are almost done, what I wanna do is I wanna add some garnish to the plate. One of my favorite restaurants that I went to when I was living in Houston is this grocery store that also served food. 
One of my favorite things to eat was a fermented pork sausage with some sticky rice. And on the side, they gave you ginger and some red onion. And I loved it so much that I decided to put that on this plate, especially since we're eating this beef rib with the fish sauce and the sticky rice. We wanna cut it thin and cut them into really thin sticks so that as we kind of go from each bite, we can put in a little piece of ginger in there as well to give it a little bit of crunch and some freshness. And if you cut it too thick, it'll be a little bit too fibrous and it'll also be maybe a little bit too strong and overpowering. So the smaller you cut it, the easier it'll be to eat. And uh, I don't know, I think it just adds a nice texture to it. So we're looking for a stick, something like that. So as you guys can see right there, we got some pretty even pieces with our onion and our ginger. And I think it'll just go really, really nicely with, uh, with our beef rib and our fish sauce. All right, guys, one of the last things that we need to do is after we've done all the soaking with our glutinous rices, now we gotta steam it. So uh, this is just kind of the setup that I got today. So I get this pot with this little steamer screen right here. I just want to show you guys the setup because I'm going to bring this over the stove and add some water to this uh, just so I can show you guys what I'm working with here. Uh, we're going to use basically like a cheese cloth here and this has been soaked in water so that when it steams, this glutinous rice doesn't stick to the cheesecloth if it's super dry. So we want to make sure it's pretty wet. And we're just going to put all the drained rice with leaving space around the, the outer rim just so we can get steam all the way through. Also leave a little hole in the middle, kind of basically like a donut, just so we can get heat on the outside and going through the middle as well. And then bring kind of like the edges all around the outside and make sure it's nice and kind of like contained so it steams really nice and even. I just wanted to show you guys this out here just because it's a little bit easier to see. All right guys, now that my steamer is ready to go, get that rice in. Try to bring the rice away from the walls. Then we'll let go for 15 or 20 minutes. One thing that I wanna make very clear is that I have never made this rice before. I didn't know anything about the process of doing it. I also didn't know there is very special equipment that is made for this. Uh, but luckily, other people who know more than I do uh, found other ways to kind of uh, give us more options. This entire method with the steamer and the cheesecloth and all that kind of stuff is something that I watched on YouTube as well. So I'm gonna leave the link to the channel that I learned this from. It's from Hot Thai Kitchen. I think it goes by another name as well, but I'll leave in the description anyway for you guys to check out. A lot of great recipes on there and it's always just kind of nice to see how other people cook. All right guys, so we have this rice that we have just finished here. It kind of holds together a little bit. Pretty good for my first try. So here is one of the beef ribs that we were working on earlier. Let's cut this down the middle and see what it looks like. Yeah, super juicy. Love it. We'll cut up some slices and then we'll start plating this dish. Taste test first. Having a bark on all sides of that beef rib is really nice. This one beef rib feeds a bunch of people if you serve it like this or serve it with other things. Remember, it's only half of the entire beef rib. We still got this entire piece here. Earlier about this membrane, if you were to cut this up into smaller pieces like this and then throw them back on the grill or something like that to get them nice and charred. And this, is, this might not be everyone's thing, but I love this sort of texture. It's great, it's delicious. All right, so let's get plating this dish. First thing I wanna do is plate that beef rib. Next, we got that fish sauce, some of that sticky rice. I'm used to seeing it in kind of like a mound like, so it kind of stays warm and doesn't dry out. We got our little sticks of ginger and our thinly sliced red onion right there. There, guys, we got our Thai-inspired beef rib with sticky rice. Let's give this a taste. So I'm gonna take some of this sticky rice and kind of Press it out like this. A little bit of beef rib, or a lot of bit of beef rib. Some ginger, onion, and I'm just gonna give it a little dunk in the sauce. It is so good. I added more lemon juice and salt to the sauce, and I added a little bit more water just because I felt like, at least for this, because I wanted to get more sauce in it. 
I wanted to thin it out a little bit more so I can get a good dunk and it was a little bit sweeter. But the ginger and the red onion that do add a nice sweetness to it and a crunch, which is great. I know the raw ginger sounds a little bit weird, but guys, like, but this bite right here, I know it doesn't look that great in my hand because it's falling apart. It is so good. Mmm. All right, we gotta get some taste testers in here. I'm up, I'm up. All right, so I got my mom and dad here for the taste test. Yeah, you can dip, you can dip it. Mm. What do you like better, mm. this one or last week? I like this one better, better. right? Yeah. <laughs> I like the thin rice. Ginger is good. Mm -hmm. Let me taste more the meat. If this meat is more chewy and more juicy, it tastes good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I like it. The ginger? Good. Yeah, right? The ginger is good, right? Yeah. Very good. Two thumbs yeah. up. Okay. <laughs> Two thumbs Very up. Good. There you go. Mm -hmm. good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed just a different version of a beef rib. All you guys have is a kettle style grill. You can still cook some great barbecue on that thing. Maybe your smoker isn't as big as a 22 inch, maybe you have an 18 and a half. Putting all the ribs into individual ribs and smoking it that way is really great too. And I also think the extra benefit of getting seasoning all the way around is huge. The way that you can kind of slice is a little bit different. You kind of get a little more texture all the way around. I think they're all great things. The flavor profile of everything is just hitting on all like the savory, the fatty, the spicy, the sweet. And then again, with the texture with the onion and the ginger, I think it's really, really important to kind of have that when you have a meat that's really, really soft. So if you guys are looking for a smoker slash grill and maybe you don't have a large backyard to put an offset, I would highly, highly recommend looking for a SNS grill. Uh, if you guys are looking for something like that, I have an affiliate link in the description down below for you guys to check out. Uh, and if you guys use that, it's a great way to help support this channel as well. So that's it for us today. Make sure you like, subscribe, share this video with your friends, and I'll see you guys in the next one.